The plane breaks through grey squalls, directionless to all but the small girl feeling the craft balance before it blooms, through moist shrooms leaving a country in a second childhood for another promising the same to her, the girl, whose head is shaven by the attention of fingers like soldiers instructed to dictate how low. She reaches up and rubs a hand over what survived at the roots, too unnerved in her hometown to curl around the toll and contrast of time, but perhaps new land will lay new ground. Her return will be buried in the humid and dusty trails of Jamasi, beneath potholes and shallow thoughts, where auntie put her into a cab barely pieced together, orange puzzle pieces displaying an imbalance with parts and puffs, with two small plastic bags full of water, another dripping fried rice in her trouser pocket, and a backpack containing a few items of clothing, some paperwork, and a passport. She'd only seen two photos of herself. The first, fallen, retreating to the dust, was snatched from her hand and encased in the pages of a Bible. The second inside another book, but green, her embellishing face held in place by plastic, material finally, protected by the highlighted Republic of Ghana. Importance impresses on her every item as she gathers her thoughts, telling herself again who to look for, the age she is supposed to be and which state carries her birthday. Details that will fall when a lowered head faces British breeze because who cares how long or when, so long as she's there. To her right, she fights not to be consumed by the compulsion to look. Losing so many times, the abronies sitting in the next hour of broken seats may assume she's inviting them over. Those twisting and polishing her tongue, blowing grammar without savouring the sound, a switched tempo contorted into another language. Do her sisters know she has gone? She pauses to touch on a frame life in reverse, a wonder as splashes of technicolour appear. She was sent away, told auntie would watch her from now, because the house was too small when she was the eldest. She'd had more life with family. Her arguments not allowed to conclude, even though when she lands, new documents will read her younger than every sibling. But anyway, it's fine. Because of course, of course, her auntie, one who may have only seen clean terrazzo and splintering brown arms too weak to pound or fold, just one to return glass that once contained orange juice made sweeter with stolen sips. Akos. Akos knew what this small girl was meant for. It was she who arranged the flight, knew where to go for foreign affairs and waved palm fronds as, as she chased the taxi, panting in tree or fanti. Remember where you came from. Words built upon or containing, I can get by without you. Or sadness. Perhaps sadness. The girl looks out the window and wonders which clouds hold the weight of Aradia. This is his home, giving her way to pass unscathed, one body of water to another, disturbing his lavish sky. But for her, he doesn't mind. My daughter, it is fine. Yes, God is leading this plane, she thinks. God will lead me through. Hey, Abochiri. A new life blooms as a single thread weaves through the corner of her cheek pulling the beginnings of a smile as the thought lands.